Okay, finally getting to the pour. I bought this, actually it must be almost two weeks ago. I bought all of these, uh, this clay, all of these different kinds of molding materials. This is platinum silicon rubber and then uh, pourable silicon rubber. Had to find the right containers that would fit the molds and then um, make some models. So it's been a fair amount of work done but not um, no actual finished product is yet. And here we are going to work on the finished product. So I really want to make sort of like chocolate and cake molds out of this. But I thought, oh, if I pour a mold right away, I will, won't be able to make more than one cake mold. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a rubber mold, cast it, and then pour the food grade over it. And I'll have to check and make sure if it's okay to pour the food grade over the casted one and then use it for food um, or if I have to um, protect the casted one before I use it again. Okay, so let's open the box. So part A is very thin, part B is thicker and blue. Okay. don't have a measure of any sort, so I'm going to use this, one to one. And will that be good enough? No, it won't because that will give me probably enough for that and that, but not enough for that and that and that, so I'm not really sure what I should do. Let me think about this bit. Okay. I decided I'm going to pour it up to this line for each one and then pour it into here to mix it. Et voila! Lesson definitely learned here. It was going really nicely when I started out. Um, but by the time I got to the second one, it had really gelled quite a bit. Six minutes is six minutes. I would say I'm going to go for the slower one next time. So I just used most of this and most of this and I've made maybe one good one but it looks like it's got some bubbles in it. Well, oh well, that's just my learning opportunity there. And then um, with the, hopefully they're not in the pattern on the outside, it's okay. but. Um, and then these are a mess. I had to kind of press them on and who knows what they look like. But we're just going to let them set and see. Um, and I've got quite a clean up mess. So first lesson, uh, definitely put a cloth down or a paper down. Second lesson, uh, either move really fast or mix a small amount or um, use the slower stuff, um, slower curing stuff. And, uh, but let's see how this works. Uh, cure time is um, 30 minutes, so we're going to leave it alone for 30 minutes. What's this doing? So these I, I had to smear on at the end because the, um, the thing had gotten too um, hard. Hold this. Uh-huh. Take it as I... So I don't know what it looks like, so I kind of smushed it in. Okay. Which is not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to pour it in. That one got poured. Okay. But this is the fast cure. Uh huh. So it cured pretty quickly. And that's why we can do this. Usually it takes four hours. But undo this. So that's how fast it sets up? Yeah. That's what it started setting before I took it out. And if I didn't have it mixed properly, it might be a little bit goopy inside. Okay, so it pretty much destroys the original, but looks nice, right? Wow. Pretty good, right? So that's the mold. Yeah, so now I can make um, a, a resin version of it, and then I can make more of these in, um, in food grade. So. What do you mean food grade? So I can make uh, chocolates. Oh, is that what they're going to be? Yeah, but see, this one kind of messed up because I smushed it on because it was all hardening. So I learned. But, oh, it came out pretty nice. 
Look. Even if it's in pieces? Oh, well, we don't care about that. It's not in pieces. It's Oh, one. wow. Okay. So that, that can be a candy. It's a little goopy. Hopefully that will cure. But there's a trick to getting it out of there, isn't there? And everything else? Well, once you'd you, you've used the um, clay, you don't really need it. So... Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Wow. This is great. Now this part, see, that's the door handle, the doorknob. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, that's so good. This is awesome. And wow. then this one. But the trouble was I tried to do too many at once. Oh. So for this, for this fast pour one, because uh -huh. it needed time to cure. What is the foil? Is it just to protect the bottom? or No, because there's a uh, cardboard under there. Oh, to yeah. kind of help elevate it? Yeah. To help um, give it a base. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. Wow. And then this one. Oh, this is the one that actually got poured first. I bet you could use parchment paper too, huh? Um, probably. Because supposedly that it, things don't stick to it when it's parchment. Kinda, look this. This one has a little because there's a hole. So we have to trim this so it doesn't hook up like that. Look at cool, right? Bye guys. Bye, thank you. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Uh, yeah, but it's looking good, right? Wow. So I'm gonna trim this off. And then this will be a candy mold. <laughs> Fun, huh? Wow. That's pretty amazing. That just shows you how much you need to exercise your imagination so you know. <laughs> Fairy doors. Well, this is the first step, so then we do the next step. There's a little bit left, so maybe, but I think I want to make some teeny tiny ones. Okay, these are not intended for brush on mold making. Easy to use, mixed one to one by volume. Uh, this is Mold Star 16 Fast. It has a six minute pot life and 30 minute cure time. And relatively low viscosity and vacuum degassing is not required for most applications. What she did say is when I it, I should pour it from high up. So that's what I'm going to do is to make sure that I can um, do that. Um, it's a soft material, cured to soft strong rubbers which are tear resistant and exhibit very low long-term shrinkage. It'll last a long time in my mold library and it's good for casting wax, gypsum, resins, concrete and other materials. Heat resistant up to 450 and is suitable for casting low temperature melt metal alloys. Mm, interesting. Will not cure against surfaces containing sulfur even when sealed. Mm, interesting. Okay. okay. A few things I'm not ready for, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Um, it says safety, use in a properly ventilated space. Wear safety glasses, I have glasses on, long sleeves and rubber gloves to minimize contamination risk. Now I've been touching these um, molds with my hand, the sculptures with my hand, so hopefully that doesn't cause a problem. Use at 73 degrees, warmer temperatures will drastically reduce working and cure times. Oops, it's been really hot. Storing at warmer temperatures will also reduce the usable shelf life of unused material. They have a limited shelf life and should be used as soon as possible. Adding cured silicone rubber may be inhibited by certain contaminants in or on the pattern to be molded, resulting in tackiness 
at the pattern interface or a total lack of cure throughout the mold. Latex, sulfur clays, certain wood surfaces, and the newly cast polyester, epoxy, tin cure, silicon rubber, or urethane rubber may cause inhibition. If compatibility is a concern, do a test. Although not usually necessary, um, a, you should use a, a release agent. I don't have one. And then so, um, what else? Measuring and mixing. Before you mix, begin pre-mix part A and part B separately. After dispensing required amounts into mixing container, one to one by volume, Mix thoroughly, making sure you scrape the sides and bottoms of the mixing container several times. The rubber should be a uniform color with no streaks. Pour in a single spot at the lowest point of the containment field. Let the rubber seek its own level. A uniform flow will help minimize entrapped air. Time to demold can be reduced by applying mild heat, but don't worry about that because we're not going to do that. Casting abrasive materials such as concrete can quickly erode mold detail, while casting non-abrasive materials will not affect mold detail. Before storing, the mold should be cleaned with a soap solution and wiped fully dry. Two part or more molds should be assembled. Mold should be stored on a level surface in a cool, dry environment. Avoid contact with eyes. Silicon polymers are generally non-irritating. However, a slight transit irritation is possible. Flush eyes with water for 15 minutes and seek medical attention. Okay. Alright, and a lot of properties, stabilities, whatnot, transportation. This over here. Okay. Now we will mix. Stir thoroughly before mixing with part A. So, six minute pot life, that's scary. Okay.